Okay, so here we're going to talk about uh, AP Biology Topic 1.2 and 1.3, part of Unit 1, Chemistry of Life, and this little video will focus on the elements of life. So when we look at all life on Earth and what we all have in common, from single-celled amoebas to trees to mammals, nadarians, across all domains of life, is that we're made of the same basic five elements. Now, that's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Of course, there are other trace elements like sulfur or zinc or iron, but these five elements are what bond together to build the organic molecules that make us. So here's this little video is basically an introduction to um, uh, the macromolecules we'll study in biology. So we are more than just elements though. So these five major elements, C, H, O, and P, form the four macromolecules that make life on earth possible. So in carbohydrates, carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Lipids are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Proteins are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And there's two amino acids um, that have sulfur. But the reason sulfur isn't listed right here is because it's not in all the amino acids. Like the main elements are C, H, O, and N. And then in nucleic acids, which, which is, sorry, which are your DNA and your RNA, um, we now add the phosphorus. So uh, you have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus that build our nucleic acids. Each of these um, uh, four macromolecules or organic molecules will be studied in detail throughout our year. All right, so before we can talk about them though, let's introduce two vocabulary words. We have monomer and polymer. So a monomer is a single building block while a polymer is going to be a chain of those building blocks, like a repeating monomer over and over and over again. So an analogy or an example of this would be like a single bead is a monomer, and then all of the beads on a chain or a necklace would be your polymer. Or a single link would be the monomer, and then a chain link would be your polymer. So now we're going to compare like the macromolecules and see how they are built out of single monomers that repeat into polymers. All right, so monomers join together or bond together to form polymers, and then polymers can be broken down to go back to monomers. Okay, so this is just an overview table to give you a big picture idea of our organic macromolecules. So one of them, carbohydrates, that's made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The monomer is glucose. And the polymer, you can have a number of different polymers that we'll study in our carbohydrate section. But this, for example, could very easily be starch, which is a polymer or a polysaccharide um, you find in like potatoes. And then our proteins, you have the monomer is an amino acid. And the polymer is going to be a string of those amino acids called a polypeptide. Now for nucleic acids, um, their monomer is a little bit more intimidating. It's actually called a nucleotide. And if you're familiar with like A, T, C, and G in DNA or the A, U, C, and G in RNA, um, those, the, the A, the T, the C, that is actually this part here. So when we talk about like A, U, C, G in RNA, it would be one of these um, parts. Now you can also see here, here's that phosphorus. Now this is a carbon a ring here. You see the oxygen and the hydrogen. So um, DNA and RNA have C, H, O, N, and P, and they're basically chains of repeating nucleotides. This one here would be RNA because it's single-stranded, while DNA would be two strands. Now lipids, however, don't follow that monomer-polymer rule. Lipids um, do fall under the macromolecule category, however, they're not built in a repeating chain. Instead, we have different categories of lipids. We have our triglycerides. This is like your fat um, or waxes and oils. Then we have our cell membrane. So here, this part of the cell membrane, the fatty acid tails, are lipids and have the properties of lipids. And then we also have our sterols. And our sterols include like our sex hormones, or our steroid hormones, or our fat-soluble vitamins, cholesterol. So um, all three of these molecules are lipids and have 
characteristics of lipids. However, they aren't in the normal monomer polymer fashion, but they are made of C, H, and L. Okay, so let's think about this. Like, how is life on Earth built, right? So one of the most amazing organisms on Earth to me are plants. And so with plants, they have to build all four of these organic molecules. They have to build their own carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So when you hear growing up, plants make their own food. True, they don't eat. They have to build their own molecules from thin air. So as plants grow, they need to build all their organic molecules from what they have available to them in their environment. So plants are gonna take the carbon dioxide and the water, so carbon dioxide from the air, water from the soil, and they're gonna do photosynthesis, and that's how sugars are built. So macromolecules, simply from photosynthesis alone with the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, we can build carbohydrates and we can build lipids, or not we, but plants, right? So this here is a glucose molecule. This is a single sugar built by plants during photosynthesis. You can see your carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, your C, H, and O. So this is actually glucose, right? And when we look at macromolecules of plants, sure, they can build lipids and carbohydrates from the building blocks of life during photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water, but they also have to get their nitrogen and their phosphorus. So that nitrogen and phosphorus to build their, am their amino acids for proteins and to build their nucleic acids, they're gonna get that from the soil. So when we look at the building blocks of life, your carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and we talk about later in ecology, like the carbon cycle or the water cycle or the nitrogen cycle, so here you have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen existing in a or an abiotic source, the air or the soil, right? So like it's not incorporated into a living cell, but plants are able to take these molecules from the environment and then convert them into biological organic molecules. And so that's one of the reasons why plants are amazing. Um, and then they'll take the nitrogen and the, and the phosphorus from the soil and build everything they need for life. And then we, as heterotrophs, are going to eat those plants. And now we have the building blocks for ourselves. Okay, so when we talk about carbohydrates, this is just a quick intro. There's a whole separate video on just carbohydrates. So um, we can look at monosaccharides. So mono means one and saccharide means sugar. Sorry, it should be more like this, right? So a mono is one or a single and then saccharide is sugar. So we talk about monosaccharides, um, we're talking about single sugars. There are three main single sugars or monosaccharides on earth. We have glucose, we have fructose, and we have galactose. So now what you notice is that sugars end in os. So if you ever see a word and you're in doubt, you don't know what type of molecule it is, pay attention. If it ends in os, it's a carbohydrate or a sugar. So um, our blood sugar is basically glucose. And even though we eat fruit sugar, fructose, so when you eat um, like grapes, for example, that sugar in the grape is fructose, but our liver will actually turn it into glucose for us. And the galactose is a single sugar that's found in breast milk. Okay, and here you can see with the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that sugars are made from C, H, and O. All right. So now, though, let's talk a little bit about um, topic 1.3. Um, when I have two sugars uh, joined together here, we would actually call this a disaccharide, two sugars. However, my question is, how can I join two monomers together? to begin to build a polymer or a chain of sugars or a chain of amino acids or a chain of nucleotides. If I wanna build a polymer, I have to join the monomers together. So how can we do this, right? Well, enzymes, which are proteins that help reactions happen in the cell, enzymes are actually going to remove a hydroxyl group or an OH from one sugar and then a hydrogen from the other, and that forms water. 
And now these two uh, monomers, these two monosaccharides can join together. So basically, if you really think deeply about what we just did, or here's an enzyme, we can, and I know this is not a video about enzymes, but this is called the active site, and it's specific to these um, carbohydrates. So here you have a glucose coming in and another glucose, or two monosaccharides. The enzyme is going to facilitate this reaction, removing a water, and now we have a disaccharide. Now, the cool thing about enzymes is that they can be used over and over and over again unless they get destroyed or denatured, right? So then here, um, we end up with our disaccharide. So while we started with two single monomers, we are starting the process of building a polymer. And if you think about what we are doing, when we remove that water, we are basically dehydrating that molecule, right? We're, it's losing water. So we call this process dehydration synthesis. The synthesis, that means to build. So we're building something by dehydrating it. So in the process of joining two monomers together and removing a water, we are building while dehydrating. We call this process dehydration synthesis. Now, how can we split two sugars apart? You guessed it, we have this water molecule here and we can actually just add the water molecule back. An enzyme will do this as well. And then we can split the sugar by adding the OH and the hydrogens back to this water molecule. And now we've split a disaccharide, two sugars, back into two single monomers. Now this is actually what happens when you eat sugar. Table sugar, the white sugar you put in your coffee or something, is actually a disaccharide. It is made out of a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule, and here's that covalent bond. So when you eat sugar, an enzyme in your saliva, like when your mouth waters, that's putting enzymes into your saliva, that enzyme, salivary amylase, is actually going to add a water and then split those two sugars apart. So anytime in biology, you see this word lysis. Lysis means to split. We see this in glycolysis, glycolysis. We see this in photolysis. We see this in a cell lysis. Basically, lysis means to split. And here, if you think about it, we added a water, and a prefix for water is hydro. So basically what we did was hydrolysis or hydrolysis. So this process of adding a water to split apart two molecules into individual building blocks or monomers is called hydrolysis. So the topic of dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis is actually your 1.3. And then the five elements of life, the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, being part of lipids and carbohydrates, and then the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, being part of proteins, and then the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus, being part of nucleic acids, is your topic 1.2. All right, good job. Oh, sorry, here's another summary. You have your dehydration synthesis and your hydrolysis, and that is the end.